here being safe number one in the deposition of the corporate designee of Maryland Provo One Medical Services PC in the matter of Kevin Tolson versus St. Agnes Healthcare Incorporated at all in the circuit court for Baltimore City. Case number 24C120871. Today's date is May 8th, 2014. The time is 9.49 a.m. Video operator today is Brian Mackey. This deposition is taking place at the offices of Anderson, Co. and King, 7 St. Paul Street, Baltimore, Maryland. Council, please identify themselves and state who they represent. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Justin Zuber, and I represent the plaintiff in this case, Kevin Tolson. Robert H. Bass, Jr., on behalf of Dr. Priscilla Jackson, uh, Krupa Shaw, PA, and Maryland Provo One Medical Services, PC. And Alexandra Moylan on behalf of St. Agnes Healthcare, Inc. and Caroline Stell, RN. The court reporter today is Sue Smith of Merrill Deposition Services. With a reporter, please swear in the witness. Dr. Tuomo, can I get you to raise your right hand? Do you declare and or affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you're about to give is the truth? I do. Thank you. Uh, good morning, doctor. As I said, my name is Justin Zuber, and I represent the plaintiff in this case, Kevin Tolson. Um, doctor, have you ever had your deposition taken before? Uh, yes, I have. Okay, on how many occasions? Um, probably a couple. Okay. Yeah. Uh, two or three? Uh, yeah, I think one or two. Like, yeah. One or two? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I probably don't have to go over the rules of depositions with you. You're fairly familiar with those? Um, I believe so. Okay. okay. Uh, doctor, can you state your business address for the record, please? My business address um, is uh, uh, 200 uh, Whitmer Drive. Uh, Horsham, Pennsylvania. Okay. And doctor, where are you currently employed? Uh, I'm actually employed um, in part by MCARE Inc. And um, I also um, um, do uh, work for a consulting company known as MS2. Okay. okay. And how long have you held that position? Uh, with MS2, that's been uh, probably about uh, eight months now. Okay. Okay. And then with MCARE Inc., I I've um, been working for them for um, since 2007. Okay. okay. And did you hold the same position that you hold today back in December of 2009? Uh, I do not. Okay. okay. Back in December 2009, what position did you hold? So in 2009, I was um, a medical director at St. Agnes Hospital Emergency Department. And doctor, it's my understanding that you're here today as a corporate representative for Maryland Provo One, but you didn't specifically mention Maryland Provo One when I asked you what position you currently hold and who you work for. Um, can you explain why you're here today as a sure. corporate I, rep for Maryland Provo I One? I did. I uh, I was employed by Maryland Provo One. Um, so Maryland Provo One um, uh, uh, contracts with MCare for management services, um, and. Um, uh, so I, and I worked for so Maryland. I was paid by Maryland Provo One as part of my duties at St. Agnes Hospital as a medical director. Okay. So currently, you don't have any relationship with Maryland Provo One. Is is that what I understand? That's correct because uh, Maryland uh, St. Ag Maryland Provo One, is my understanding, does no longer have a contract with St. Agnes Hospital. So that's one. But in terms of his still employment, well, for the record, Justin, sure. uh, with MCARE Incorporated, MCARE Incorporated and Maryland Provo One, or MCARE Incorporated is the parent, and Maryland Provo One is a uh, subsidiary of that, in essence. Uh, so he really is still employed by Maryland Provo One in a roundabout way. If it's, it's hard to say without a corporate structure, but that's what it is. Okay. Right. Um, but, it, but it's on a part-time basis. So. Okay. And, and just so I'm clear, um, in this particular case, Dr. Jackson was an employee of Maryland Provo One? No, that's okay. incorrect. Dr. Okay. Jackson in 2009 was an independent contractor, okay. um, and um, uh, Maryland Provo One did not employ physicians for St. Agnes Hospital at that time. Okay. Um, so was he an employee of MCARE? She? She. She. Uh, no, she, again, she was an independent contractor. Okay. So she was an independent contractor. Does she have any relationship whatsoever with MCARE? Um, not not uh, directly her. Again, um, I can't speak to that because I'm here on behalf of Maryland Provo One and she was an independent contractor, okay. not, not employed by Maryland Provo One. 
Okay. okay. And not an independent contract with Maryland Provo One as well. Okay. Just the independent contract, which I supplied to Mr. Gaston, is with, uh, let's see, let me make sure I get the name correct. It's with uh, M Care Physician Providers Incorporated. Okay. And you have that copy of that contract. Okay. I got you. Okay. Um, so back in December 2009, what was the relationship with Krupa Shaw or between Krupa Shaw and Maryland Provo One? And Krupa Shaw was an employee of Maryland Provo One. Okay. Do you know how long she had been an employee of Maryland Provo One back in December of 2009? Um, I, uh, I do not recall off the top of my head. I would have to um, go back and check uh, with her, uh, you know, her records because I don't remember her hire date. Uh, what kind of record <coughs> exists with regards to that, and who is the custodian of those records? Um, I don't actually know technically who's the custodian of the records. Um, um, uh, so, and I'm sorry, the other part of your question was, it was a two-part question, custodian sure. and the uh, other part. What, what kind of records are you referring to? Are these basic employment records? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, and again, for the record, we provided her contract, which has her date of hire on there to Mr. Gaston previously. Okay. Give me one second here. Sure. Have you uh, reviewed in preparation for your deposition today the amended notice of corporate deposition that was, um, I think, served on your counsel <coughs> back on? Change one second here. We changed the date a few uh, times. Yeah, it looks like April 29th, 2014. Um, I believe I have if we're, if we're looking at the same document. Yeah, I think, oh. I think we are. Yeah. yeah, we are. Okay. okay. And my question for you really is there's a variety of topic areas that are listed on there as exhibit number one. Um, have you had a chance to review all of those topic areas prior to the deposition here today? Uh, yes, I've reviewed okay. this document. Um, based upon those topic areas, um, are those areas that you can comment on as a representative for Maryland Provo One? Yes. Okay. There's none of them that fall outside of the scope of I guess your knowledge as a corporate representative from Maryland Purple One? Uh, that's correct. I will. There, there are questions here relating to Dr. Jackson, and as, I, as we just discussed, she was not an employee with Maryland Purple One. So. Right, okay. Well, I, I think what I'd like to do here is kind of more or less go down the list here, and you can tell me if you've been able to find any of the documents that we requested that be produced. Um, number one here, and this is on page number nine. If you wanted to turn, maybe this would be helpful to follow through. Page nine. Yeah. We get, we, well, I think we've got. You we may have changed. We've got our page. My page is five. I'm sorry. So Mine is two. Okay. What? <laughs> is it the amended notice, or do you have the original notice? I got. I, I have the amended notice. It's still five. Okay. Yeah. I think I have the amended notice also. The amended. Uh, I. I have five as the beginning of the topic areas, but for oh, the things okay. that were actually oh, asked him, yeah, right, 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 yeah, uh, because uh, he's already said he, did. they cover basically the same things. Oh, okay, good, all right, good. So nine. You're at nine, okay, okay. We're, we're on the same page. Okay. All right, um, so as a corporate representative of Maryland Provo One, um, have you been able to locate uh, the original paper, paper medical chart for Kevin Tolson from December 3rd, 2009? So Maryland Provo One does not retain medical records. Um, the medical records are actually the property of the hospital, so there's no record to uh, obtain from okay. Maryland Provo One. And in the hospital, you're referring to St. Agnes Hospital? Correct. Okay. Um, and with respect to number two here, were you able to locate the original paper medical record for Kevin Tolson for 12-5-2009? I'm going to uh, an objection to the previous question and to this question. And once again, you may be having a lot of repetitive responses here, but I have to go down the list, so okay. if it's the same response, that's fine. And, and for the record, these records have already been produced in this case. And this was the topic of a hearing, a long and extensive hearing on Tuesday before Judge Fikas. You can answer. Okay. So, in Maryland, Purple One does not um, retain medical records. Okay. In your position as a corporate representative, have you been able to locate the medical record that identifies the individuals who assisted Kevin Tolson upon his discharge from the hospital? Uh, I, to the best of my knowledge, no such record exists, and it's certainly not in the property of Maryland, Provo One. Okay. Um, does Maryland, Provo One keep any records? Um, 
for any employees besides physicians and a physician's assistants, or do they solely employ physicians and physician's assistants? Uh, Maryland Provo one um, primarily just um, um, employs physicians, physician's assistants. Um, they may or may not have some back office people that I'm not aware of. But okay. Are you aware if they um, employ any additional employees that um, may be operating or functioning at St. Agnes Hospital in other capacities besides as a physician or a physician assistant? No. Okay. And I think I know your response to this, but uh, as you're in your capacity as a corporate representative, have you been able to locate the actual MRI hard film study from the MRI taken of Kevin Tolson's left leg on December 7, 2009? Uh, again, Maryland Purple One doesn't retain such records. Do you know who would have a record like that? Objection. You can answer if you, if you know. <coughs> um, I would presume that those would be with the hospital, but again, I am um, uh, um, not a control of, of that uh, of those studies so okay and moving on to the next page here um, does Maryland Provo one have any written procedures policies and or protocols relating to the emergency room triage and it includes handbooks manuals or guidelines um, yeah it does not again that's uh, not something that would be part of uh, Maryland Provo one um, uh, documents uh, if you bear with me one second, I might be missing page here, but... Um, okay, page 10. Page, page 10. I can give a line. Okay. Great, thank you. Okay. All right. Okay. okay. And, um, Doctor, does Maryland Provo 1 have any procedures, policies, and or protocols that, to the best of your knowledge, were in force and effect back in December of 2009? at St. Agnes Hospital. I'm going to note an objection, a continuing objection to the policies and procedures. Perfectly fine with that. Okay. Um, are you referring to question four? Uh, no, question one. Question. Oh, oh. question one. Okay. A um, and it wasn't really that, that question. I had a, a separate question mm -hmm. after your response to that question. Okay. So again, Maryland Purple One does not uh, keep such, um, such policies um, uh, uh, or procedures. Uh, those, um, those relate to clinical practice uh, uh, of medicine, and it's you know, not within Maryland Provo, it's the one's purview to um, ha have that type of material. Okay. Um, is it Maryland Provo One's understanding that St. Agnes Hospital has their own written procedures and policies and protocols that- I'm, Oh, God, Justin, I'm sorry, I didn't interrupt you. I'm sorry. Wait. I'm going to object and instruct him not to answer. He is not here to discuss any policy procedures, say, at his hospital, only Maryland Provo One Medical Services. So don't answer that question. I'm, I'm going to join in the objection. Okay. <clears throat> um, next question here on the list. Um, does Maryland Provo One have any written procedures, policies, and or protocols relating to triage classifications? Uh, no, it does not. Okay. Um, does Maryland Provo One have any written procedures, policies, and or protocols relating to urgent care referrals at St. Agnes Hospital? Again, it does not. Okay. Does Maryland Provo One have any written procedures, policies, and or protocols relating to the circumstances under which a physician's assistant and emergency room physician is obligated to change the triage level of a patient while the patient is still in the urgent care treatment area? Objection to the foundation. You can, you can answer. Okay. Um, Maryland Provo One does not have any such uh, uh, policies or procedures. Um, what you're referring to is really clinical practice of medicine. Sure. Um, does Maryland Provo One have any written procedures, policies, and or protocols relating to the circumstances under which a physician's assistant and emergency room physician is obligated to change the triage level of a patient while the patient is still in the main emergency room area? No, it does not. Again, that's clinical practice of medicine. Yep, I understand. Um, does Maryland Provo One have any written procedures, policies, protocols, handbooks, manuals, and or guidelines relating to the manner in which a physician's assistant and emergency room doctor are supposed to make notations in a patient's chart after they examine a patient who arrives at the emergency room for medical care? No, it's not. Um, just one follow-up question with respect to that real quickly. Um, does Maryland Provo One 
have any type of documentation policies related to its physician's assistance um, when the physician assistant is operating as an employee for another institution like St. Agnes Hospital. I'm sorry, could you just sure. restate state that one more time for sure. me? Okay. Um, so Maryland Provo 1, of course, employs physician assistants, and those physician assistants may be working in some capacity as a physician assistant for an institution like St. Agnes Hospital. My question is, does Maryland Provo 1 have any type of policies or procedures that apply to that physician assistant while they're working for another institution like, like St. Agnes Hospital? Objection. No. Okay. But no, but no it, Maryland Provo 1 does not. Um, uh, again, that the relationship between a physician assistant and a physician um, and care of a patient falls under clinical practice, um, state licensing for practice of medicine, uh, and so Maryland Pro Bowl one would not supersede those those types of regulations. Okay. Does Maryland Pro Bowl one have any written procedures, policies, and or protocols relating to the manner in which a late entry, meaning an entry that is made more than 24 hours after the event that it relates to, is supposed to be noted in an emergency room patient's chart? No, it does not. Okay. And once again, that would be, I'm assuming, the um, institution that the physician assistant is working for, that would be something that they most likely would have. Objection to the foundation. You can answer if you know. Okay. So, um, uh, you know, the, uh, any hospital will have um, uh, some uh, rules or guidelines around documentation because the hospital owns the medical record. Um, but as far as Maryland Pro Bowl one, it does not or did not have any um, policies or procedures related to how entries are to, made, are to be made. Okay. Does Maryland Provo 1 have any written procedures, policies, and or protocols relating to the manner in which an emergency room physician, or, sorry, strike that because you're not here to testify about the emergency Correct. room doctor. Um, does Maryland Provo 1 have any written procedures, policies, and or protocols relating to the duties and responsibilities of a physician assistant who is working in the urgent care section of a hospital? Uh, again, no. As I, as I answered before, it gets to the practice of medicine. Gotcha. Uh, does Maryland Provo 1 have any written procedures, policies, and or protocols relating to the, I'm sorry, once again, that is an emergency room doctor <laughs> question, we will okay. skip that one. Okay. okay. <laughs> you got page 11. I do, yeah. Number 11. Okay. Yep, okay. Um, does Maryland Provo 1 have any written procedures, policies, and or protocols that a physician's assistant is required to follow in ordering a consultation for a patient in an emergency room to include a vascular consultation, an orthopedic consultation, and or a neurological consultation? No. Um, the physician's assistants, they, they practice under this, um, their license um, uh, in the state of Maryland, um, you know, they're expected to um, provide quality medical care and use their best judgment in terms of obtaining a consult. Um, let me ask you a few questions about that real quick. Um, when Maryland Provo 1 employs a physician assistant um, and then that physician assistant then is working underneath the supervision of another physician, um, it's my understanding that under the Maryland regulations there has to be some type of delegation agreement um, between the supervising physician and the physician assistant, is that correct? Yes, that's my understanding as well. Okay. Does Maryland Provo 1 keep a copy of such delegation agreements? Uh, no. Those are filed with the, with the state of, of Maryland. Actually, yeah, they're filed with the state of Maryland through the, I believe it's the Maryland Board of Physicians. Okay. Does Maryland Provo 1 ensure that a delegation agreement is in place before it provides a physician assistant to an institution? to provide, I guess, physician assistant services for the institution? I'll let check. Go ahead. You can answer. Yeah. So um, it's, it's, not, it's not Maryland Provo 1. So um, all uh, uh, physicians and physician's assistants in, in a hospital setting have to obtain privileges at the hospital to practice. Um, and that is uh, outside of Maryland Provo 1's uh, purview. So in um, um, hospitals, uh, a physician assistant would have to uh, have a delegation agreement in force in order to be um, uh, able to practice, to be able to be licensed by the state to practice. So it's a state, it's a state requirement, not a, okay. not a company or corporate requirement.
Okay. With regards to the delegation agreement, I'm assuming if, if you don't maintain a copy of it, do you know, and you may not know, but do you know if the hospital keeps a copy of the delegation agreement? I do not know the answer to that question. Have you made any efforts to investigate whether St. Agnes Hospital has a copy of the delegation agreement between Dr. Jackson and Krupa Shaw? Objection. He's not here to testify as to what St. Agnes has or doesn't have. I object. And there's a protective order in place. Well, I didn't ask him whether or not uh, they have it or don't have it or whether he, I just asked him whether he investigated whether they have it or don't have it. Okay. You my, my answer is no, I did not. Do you know the name of any individual at St. Agnes Hospital who may have a copy of the delegation agreement? I'm going to object to this line of questioning. There is, again, a protective order in place regarding these topics for St. Agnes, and they were noted in the notice of deposition to us, which was the subject matter of the protective order. And there was also a motion to compel filed by the plaintiffs, and that motion to compel this information was denied, and he's not here on behalf of St. Agnes Hospital. Um, I'll <coughs> join the objection, but I'll permit yes or no. Um, I would say you have to contact St. Angus Hospital. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right, Doctor, I think we're on, looks like number 13 here. Um, does Maryland Provo 1 have a, any written procedures, policies, and or protocols regarding the procedures to be followed before any narcotic pain medication can be ordered or administered to a patient in an emergency room? It does not. Again, it goes to the practice of medicine. Um, does Maryland Provo 1 have any written procedures, policies, and or protocols that delineate or give guidance and or instruction to physician assistants for the types of forms to be used for a patient who arrives in an emergency room for medical care? Um, no, Maryland Provo 1 does not. As I mentioned before, the medical record is um, part of the hospital's um, property, and uh, so therefore Maryland Provo 1 doesn't have forms that are used in the hospital. Okay. Just a follow-up question on that. Um, when Maryland Provo 1 um, hires a physician assistant, does Maryland Provo 1 then help that physician assistant to obtain employment with an institution like St. Agnes Hospital? Uh, it's actually um, the reverse. So uh, Maryland Provo 1 would have a contract with a hospital to provide um, um, uh, physicians and or physician's assistants um, based on what the staffing matrix and needs are, Maryland Provo 1 would then hire people into those positions. So in other words, the positions already exist and then Maryland Provo 1 hire someone to fill a position. That I is, see. That so is there's an existing contract for the flow of employees, I suppose, between correct. the two entities. Yeah. It's not like Maryland Provo 1 hires physician's assistants and then looks for jobs for them. There's okay. a position that already exists. I see. Um, I'm not sure if this was produced previously in Discovery, but do you have a copy of that contract between Maryland Provo 1 and St. Agnes Hospital? Um, I, I do not have a copy. Um, I'm have assuming that that is in the custody of I, Maryland Provo 1. Yeah, I don't know if it is or not. Uh, I think it, I, I don't know if I was ever asked, to be honest with you, and I don't think, uh, it may have been produced. I don't know off the top of my head. If, if you need the contract, we'll produce it. I would, like the, I would like the contract okay. if possible. All right. Thank you. That's not a problem. Besides that contract, are there any other contracts between Maryland Provo 1 and St. Agnes Hospital describing in any way the relationship between the physician assistants who may be employees of Maryland Provo 1 and their obligations or duties as a, an employee of St. Agnes Hospital? Objection. Uh, they're uh, not employees of St. Yeah. Agnes Hospital. Uh, don't answer. They, he's, they're <coughs> not employees of St. Agnes Hospital. Uh, Justin, th th just let me just say this. The contract really is, the contract is with uh, MCARE and corporate, I believe, that they will hire, they sell it out to Maryland Provo one to hire physician's assistants. So uh, in terms of that, there's no job description. They just, they, they indicate they will supply in accordance with the contract, physician's assistants to work in the emergency department at San Angus Hospital. Okay. That's all it is. And, and really what I'm trying to, to ask you is, are there any additional documents that describe in any fashion um, the expected duties of the physician assistant when they start working then at St. Agnes Hospital? Uh, no, to the best of my knowledge, they are not. Same objection to that question. 
Does Maryland Prova 1 have any written procedures, policies, and or protocols that delineate and or spell out the duties of an urgent care physician's assistant, such as Ms. Shaw, to include any related handbooks, manual, or guidelines? No. Does Maryland Prova 1 have any written procedures, policies, and or protocols that delineate or spell out the duties of an emer I'm sorry, that's a physician question. Let's move on from that one to number 18 here. Okay. Does Maryland Prova 1 have any written procedures, policies, and or protocols to be followed when any type of narcotic pain medication is administered to a patient in the emergency room? Objection. Um, no, I believe that's similar to a previous question you asked, um, and it goes to the practice of medicine. I got gotcha. you. Um, does Maryland Prova 1 have any written procedures, policies, and or protocols to be followed when a physician's assistant suspects that a patient has suffered a vascular injury to the patient's extremity? No, it does not. 20 deals with physician. Move on here to 21 then. Uh, does Maryland Prova 1 have any written procedures, policies, and or protocols to be followed when a physician's assistant suspects that a patient has suffered a neurological injury to his or her extremity? Uh, no. Again, this is the same as the other questions, but it all it goes to the practice of medicine. Maryland Prova 1 doesn't tell its physicists how to practice medicine. Sure. Does Maryland Prova 1 have any written procedures, policies, and or protocols to be followed when an emergency room physician suspects I'm sorry, that's a... 22 is wrong. Yep. Okay. 23, um, does Maryland Prova 1 have any written procedures, policies, and or protocols to be followed when an urgent care ER patient reports that his or her extremity is cold to touch? Objection to the foundation. Um, no, again, my answer is the same as the previous question. As, uh, it goes to the practice of medicine. Does Maryland Prova 1 have any written procedures, policies, and or protocols to be followed for the removal of a splint? from an urgent care ER patient's extremity? Yeah, no, for the same reasons as previously stated. Um, do you know if Maryland Prova 1 has any written procedures, policies, and or protocols to be followed for the placement of a splint on an urgent care ER patient's extremity that has been applied by ambulance and or EMT personnel? Uh, Objection. You can answer now. Yep, no, it does not. Okay. Does Maryland Prova 1 employ EMT personnel? No. Um, does Maryland Prova 1 have any written procedures, policies, and or protocols that explains the manner in which a patient who presents to the emergency room with complaints similar to that of Kevin Tolson is to be examined by a physician's assistant? No, Maryland Prova 1 does not. Again, it goes to the practice of medicine. 27 is? Physician. Physician. Okay. Just out of curiosity, what did you review in preparation for your deposition here today? Um, I reviewed these these documents, um, um, and um, you know met with met with counsel. When you say these documents, are you referring strictly to the amended notice of deposition? Um, yes. Okay. Did you review any other documents that have been produced in this case or the, related to this case? Looked at the documents you had there. Okay. And there yeah. were some other documents we looked at that we determined were not pertinent uh, to this deposition. Um, can you tell me briefly what documents those were? Oh, okay, physician schedule. Okay. Okay. Physician schedule for any physician in particular or? For the emergency department. Okay. And was that, did that include Dr. Jackson's schedule? Uh, Dr. Jackson's name was on the schedule. Okay. Yeah. Was that previously produced in discovery? No, it wasn't asked for. Is there any way we can get a copy of that? No. <laughs> okay. Can I ask why not? Yeah, sure, you can ask why not. It wasn't asked for. It's the, in the eve of trial. And discovery is closed. And discovery is closed. Who is the custodian of that document? Counsel is. Okay. And is that a Maryland Provo 1 document? No, that is MCARE Physicians, whatever that is. Wait a minute. Let me get it straight. MCARE Physicians Providers Incorporated document. Okay. Since you reviewed that document in preparation for your deposition, can you tell me what that document said with respect to the schedule for Dr. Jackson? Don't answer that. With respect to um, Dr. Jackson's schedule, no, I'll strike that.
with regards to number 28. And uh, just let me make for the record, also, just Dr. Jackson's deposition was taken. She outlined for Mr. Gaston in detail what her time was at the hospital, what her shift was on December 3rd and, and on December 5th. So it, it's in the record. It, it just shows what time she worked is what it, it basically the schedule shows. Well, I understand that, but he's here today, and he said that at one point he's had some affiliation, I think still does have some affiliation with MCARE. You just said that there's apparently a document from NCARE, which he's reviewed in preparation for his deposition, and that document apparently is the schedule for Dr. Jackson in the date in question here, which is December 3rd, 2009, and you're instructing him not to answer any questions pertaining to that document. I don't necessarily think that that's proper or appropriate. But that's something that you know we could address later on with the judge. And for the record, it, the, the he he's employed by MCare Incorporated. He is not employed by MCare Physician Services Providers Incorporated, which is a different corporation. But if we have to, we'll, we can discuss it at a later time. Doctor, I think we were on. Was it number twenty-eight? Um, does Maryland Provo 1 have any written procedures, policies, and or protocols that explain the circumstances under which, nope. I'm sorry, that's an ER doctor question. We'll go to number 29. Does Maryland Provo 1 have any written procedures, policies, and or protocols that explain the circumstances wherein an emergency room physician? I think that's an ER doctor question too. <laughs> Move on here, number 30. Good news is we're knocking them out quickly. <laughs> Does Maryland Provo 1 have any written procedures, policies, and or protocols that explain how and under what circumstances a physician assistant's physical examination and assessment of a patient whereby the emergency room physician does not have to physically examine the patient? I'm sorry. Let me read that one yeah, again. Well, I'm sorry. What number are you on? This is number 30. Okay. Yeah. Does Maryland Provo 1 have any written procedures, policies, and or protocols that explain how and under what circumstances an emergency room physician can rely upon a physician assistant's physical examination and assessment of a patient, whereby the emergency room physician does not have to physically examine the patient? Well, that technically is an emergency room physician question, isn't it? It is, but... It uh, do you have I, any I, knowledge I, whatsoever? I object, that? Without waiving my previous objections to him not testifying, concerning an emergency room physician, I'll put him to answer that. Yeah. Uh, so the answer is no, it does not. And again, this goes to the practice of medicine, the relationship between a physician and a physician's assistant um, is uh, part of the practice of medicine. And um, so Maryland Provo 1 does not, not define that. Okay. And as you said previously, Maryland Provo 1 also, and I'm just confirming this, doesn't have any documents pertaining to that relationship. Is that correct? Correct. Does Maryland Provo 1 have any written procedures, policies, and or protocols that allow or permit a nurse to make a medical assessment diagnosis for an urgent care ER patient? I'm, I'm sorry. Are you finished? I, I'm going to straight that yeah. question just because that's, I think, outside the scope of what he's here to testify to. Thank you. Um, does Maryland Provo 1 have any written procedures, policies, and or protocols that allow or permit a physician's assistant to make a medical diagnosis, including but not limited to a sprain, strain, suspected vascular injury, suspected neurological injury, suspected orthopedic injury to a ligament, tendon, bone, and or muscle for an urgent care ER patient? No, Maryland Provo 1 does not. That's um, uh, under their scope of uh, practice in the state of Maryland. Okay. And just to be clear, Maryland Provo 1 doesn't have any documents defining any of those procedures or protocols or anything like that Correct. for a physician assistant. Okay. And number 33, Maryland Provo 1, do, do they have any written procedures, policies, and or protocols that adopt and or refer to other healthcare standards, policies, protocols, and or procedures in the medical community for the evaluation and treatment of emergency room patients? No, it does okay. not. Does Maryland Provo 1 provide any type of continuing education for physician assistants? No, it does not. Does Maryland Provo 1 require that physician's assistants um, do a certain number of hours of continuing education per year? Uh, they require the physician assistants uh, maintain their state licensure, and so it's the requirements are established by the state, but not Maryland Provo 1. Okay. Uh, number 34 here. 
Does Maryland Prova 1 have any written procedures, policies, and or protocols that pertain to Ms. Shaw's ability to order an MRI CT scan and or arteriogram for Kevin Tolson on December 3rd, 2009, if and such individuals believe the studies were warranted? Uh, no, that's not part of uh, what Maryland Provo 1 would have documentation about. Again, that goes to the practice of medicine, whether what you can order and not order. Sure. Nice adjustment in the question. Yeah, <laughs> I saw that coming. So. Uh, does Maryland Provo 1 have any written procedures, policies, and or protocols that address and or explain the time frame in which the results of an MRI, CT scan, arteriogram, and handheld Doppler study are to be completed? specifically to include how long it would normally take for such a study to be completed? No, it does not. Maryland Provo would have no control over something like that. That would be the health care facility that the individual was working for? An Objection. individual, I mean physician assistant? Objection. Uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, Maryland Provo 1 doesn't um, control the MRI, CT scan, or any of these other things, so how could it, how could it um, determine what the time frame of a study would be? Besides requiring that a physician assistant maintain their state licensure, um, once a physician assistant starts working for a facility such as St. Agnes, does Maryland Provo 1 maintain really any control whatsoever over the physician assistant and uh, how they perform their job? Um, Object. Just, uh, I'll object. You can answer. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, just uh, as any uh, employee um, would, I mean, if, um, you know, you showed up to the deposition intoxicated, I assume your firm would have some responsibility. <laughs> we would have the same for our physician's assistants. Yeah. Sure. Um, so how does that work then with an institution like um, St. Agnes if a physician assistant is not performing their job the way they are supposed to? Are, is Maryland Provo 1 contacted by St. Agnes Hospital and basically told that, hey, we're maybe having a problem with the physician assistant? Is, it, it would depend okay. on. The, I, I'm going to object. Go ahead. Depend on the nature of the problem. So, if you want to give me an example of what you would are referring to, I I can't really give you. I mean, there's a multitude of things I can think of. But let's just say, for example, if if you have a physician assistant who is not properly assessing patients, um, and St. Agnes believes that there is an issue with that, how would that be communicated to Maryland Provo One? Objection object. to the form and the foundation. Um, do you, you can answer. So, so with your, uh, your question gets to uh, um, a broader area, say, quality of care. And that falls under what's called the peer review process, which is uh, protected. Maryland Provo 1 does not conduct peer review. That's under the auspices of the hospital, okay? Um, uh, so don't say anymore. If you said peer review, that's enough. Mm -hmm. okay. That's okay. Everything about that, that then becomes okay. privileged. Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to note the same objection as Mr. Baus. Now, so you mentioned the, the peer review process, of course, and I'm, I'm not going to, since it's privileged, I'm not going to get into that, but let me ask you, though, is there a separate um, disciplinary proceeding that could take place within Maryland Provo 1 if Maryland Provo 1 that, that believes that the physician assistant is not fulfilling their obligations to the institution that they're working for? Well, is it any employment relationship? Um, you know, Maryland's an at-will um, employment arrangement, and so if Maryland Provo 1 feels an employee is not providing the proper um, services, they have the ability to terminate uh, an employee. Okay. And I think, Bob, you said that uh, the employment record or file for Krupa Shaw was already produced yes. in Discovery? Okay. Yes. Um, does Maryland Provo 1 have any, this is number 36, any written procedures, policies, and or protocols that explain the steps that should be taken by a physician assistant such as Ms. Shaw, who suspects a patient such as Kevin Tolson has suffered an injury to the internal structures in the patient's knee, including but not limited to injury to a tendon, a ligament, a muscle, or a blood vessel? No, Maryland Provo 1 does not have such uh, written policies and procedures. Uh, Maryland Provo 1 does not tell its physician's assistants how to practice medicine. Okay. I think next one. All right. Yeah. All right. Does Maryland Provo 1 have any written procedures, policies, and or protocols that explain the circumstances under which a patient in the emergency room can be administered narcotic pain medication before the patient is examined by a physician assistant or an emergency room doctor? Objection. Objection. Oh, you 
Yeah. Uh, no, it does not. And I believe this is a similar question that you asked before uh, about the administration of pain medicine, and that goes to the practice of medicine. Sure. All right, number 39, um, does Maryland Program 1 have any written procedures, policies, and or protocols that explain the circumstances under which a patient can be discharged from the emergency room when the patient still has complaints of a cold foot? Objection to the foundation. Okay. No, it does not. Uh, does Maryland Provo 1 have any written procedures, policies, and or protocols that apply and are to be followed by a physician assistant when a physician assistant in the emergency room suspects a patient has suffered an internal injury to the structures inside the patient's knee? No, my answer is the same as I think the previous question. That, um, That's a clinical question? Yes. Yeah. Or clinical. Number 41, uh, does Maryland Provo 1 have any written procedures, policies, and or protocols that apply and are to be followed by an emergency? This is an ER doctor question. Let's strike that. Okay. Uh, does Maryland Provo 1 have any written procedures, policies, and or protocols that apply and are to be followed by a physician assistant when a physician assistant in the emergency room suspects a patient has suffered an internal injury to the structures inside the patient's knee and the patient is experiencing decreased blood flow into the same leg when the, where the injury is suspected. Objection no, to the yeah. foundation. You can answer. Yeah. No, again, this is, a, this is a clinical practice question and Maryland Pro One doesn't have policies and procedures okay. on how sure. to practice medicine. All right, doctor, and uh, move down here to some additional, uh, looks like um, teaching materials and or training manuals in that section on page 14. Does Maryland Provo 1 have any written teaching and or training materials that you provide to a physician assistant and medical doctor who saw and or evaluated Kevin Tolson on December 3rd, 2009? I guess in any of the following areas, and we'll start with you, are there any materials such as that for orthopedic evaluations? No, Maryland Pro Bowl doesn't, doesn't uh, keep uh, teaching or training materials. We, we hire um, uh, clinicians that, uh, you know, have had appropriate education and training in, in their field um, and, you know, expect, expect them to know how to practice within the scope of their specialty. Okay. Um, and I'm assuming that's the same response with regards to teaching or training materials uh, related to neurological assessments? Correct. Um, same response with respect to vascular assessments as well? Same response. Does Maryland Provo 1, um, in this relationship it has with an institution like St. Agnes Hospital, I know St. Agnes Hospital obviously has different departments, but does Maryland Provo 1 um, what efforts does Maryland Provo 1 make to ensure that a physician assistant with a certain skill set is placed in the appropriate department within an institution like St. Agnes Hospital? Objection. I object. If you understand the question, yeah. Um, I would like you to just re restate uh, it. I'll, I think, I'll try I think to clarify. What, sure. um, what efforts does, or how does Maryland Provo 1 match a physician assistant who may have a certain skill set, for instance, a specialty in orthopedics, um, how does it match them in a certain department at an institution like St. Agnes Hospital who may be looking for a physician assistant with that skill set? Objection. I object. Go ahead. Okay. So in Maryland Provo, one um, hires physician assistants who are um, appropriately educated and um, uh, certified by the state of Maryland, and, um, and they are under the supervision of a physician because they're a dependent practitioner. So they're, they're always um, supervised. So that's how they ensure that a physician assistant is practicing appropriately. I, I, if I may, I think what uh, counsel has asked you is, is there, is there a mechanism by you put someone in urgent care as opposed to the main emergency department? Is that what you're asking? Right, yeah. Yeah, and that's, that's based on um, um, uh, um, feedback from the supervising physician. So, like I said, the, they're always under the, under the um, supervision of physician, and the physicians are all credentialed by the hospital as well. No, it, but that's not some type of determination which is made before they start working for the institution. In other words, does Maryland Provo 1 kind of like triage the physician assistants to make sure they're a good match for the department that they're working in at the institution? Well, I mean, they, get, they all, um, uh, you know, get uh, uh, interviewed prior to hire. Um, to make sure they're an appropriate fit um, with respect to, um, um, uh, you know, 
appearance, demeanor, you know, uh, and um, you know they check their credentials to, before hire to make sure they they did graduate from an appropriate school. Um, check their licensure to make sure they are properly licensed. Does Maryland Prova One have um, any requirements for physician assistants who may um, be placed in an urgent care facility that they have a certain number of years of experience working in urgent care? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, no, they, they do not. As a matter of fact, um, um, we uh, at the time we have hired new graduates who then go under um, supervision of physician and are. Uh, allowed to practice within their their level of ability as they develop their skills. Okay. Um, does Maryland Provo One um, require that a physician assistant have any experience in the field of orthopedics um, prior to placing a physician assistant in an urgent care facility within an institution like St. Agnes? Object. Objection to the foundation. Object. Um, I mean, as part of um, a physician assistant training, um, they get, um, they, as part of their education, they get experience in all different aspects of medicine, including orthopedics. But when you're interviewing a physician assistant um, to basically hire them, uh, do you ask the question, you know, what training have you had in, in orthopedics? Um, prior to actually hiring them for the position? Objection. Uh, I'm going to object, and this is going well beyond the scope of what he's here to testify about. Uh, there's no allegation in this case of negligent hiring, so if, you're, if the questions are seem to be headed in that direction, so I'm not going to permit him to answer any more questions about that. I'm going to join in the objection. Well, I mean, I think it's more about, they just want to know what kind of assessment they do with the physician's assistants before they place them. I mean, I think that's a, an appropriate question. It's not necessarily negligent hiring. Uh, is it on this list here? I didn't see it. Well, it, I don't think <laughs> his, his testimony has to be limited specifically to the things on this list. He has expounded, uh, all he's going to expound on that issue. So next question, Justin. Okay. Does Maryland Provo One have any written teaching and or training materials which are used to assist physicians' assistants? Shaw, and we're going to admit Dr. Jackson's name, in determining whether an urgent care and or emergency room patient is showing signs of ischemia in his or her lower extremity or other limbs. Uh, no. Where are we now? <laughs> uh, looks like number page 15, okay. number one. Um, does Maryland Provo have any forms which are used by emergency room physicians or emergency room physicians assistants for the evaluation of urgency care with ER patients? And the Maryland Merrill one does not keep um, forms or documents that are part of the medical record. Okay. And uh, I'm assuming they don't play any role in producing the forms which are used by physicians assistants when they're working at an institution like St. Agnes, right? Correct. They do not produce or, or manufacture the forms. Okay. Does Maryland Provo One provide any training for a physician assistant as to how to fill out a, uh, a basic urgent care form that may okay. be used in that setting? Objection. Well, go ahead. Object. You can answer. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, no, it does not. I mean, it's part of one's training. You're taught how to fill out a history and a physical, so we don't tell them how to do that. Okay. Um, does Maryland Provo One have any written policies, procedures, and or protocols for how a medical chart such as Kevin Tolson's medical chart from his emergency room visit on December 3rd is maintained in regards to both paper and electronic chart tracking? Can you define maintain for me? Um, I, I think uh, what the question is asking is, um, is there any type of written procedures, policies for documenting, I guess, um, or, or maintaining the documents. I'm, I'm trying to give you a better example here. Um, I suppose for importing the data into the system. Objection. After what evaluating system? it. Whether it be electronic or paper system after evaluating or assessing a patient. I object. Do you understand the yeah. question? I'm still not trying to understand the question. I should not understand what, what maintaining is. <clears throat> Let me phrase it this way. Um, th does Maryland Provo One have any procedures or protocols um, for how a physician assistant should 
um, fill out a medical chart for a patient? Uh, no. Uh, again, that's, that's part of the practice of medicine and part of one's training, and so no Maryland Provo one does not tell or prescribe to a physician assistant how they are to fill out a history and physical. Does Maryland Provo one have any type of policies or procedures um, for then um, making sure that those charts are kept in some orderly fashion by the institution that the physician assistant is working for? Okay. Object. Go ahead. Yeah. Maryland Provo one does, does not um, keep the medical records as I stated previously. Um, those are, are kept by the hospital. Does Maryland Provo 1 have any written policies, procedures, and or protocols that describe who has access to a patient's medical record? Again, Maryland Provo 1 does not maintain uh, medical records, does not keep medical records, and so they don't have policies as to how one would access those. Those are this hospital property. Does Maryland Provo 1 have any written policies, procedures, and or protocols that indicate where a patient's medical chart is kept for patients who receive medical care in the emergency room at St. Agnes Hospital? Uh, again, no, because they don't own the record. I'm just going to note an objection to that. Does Maryland Provo 1 have any written policies, procedures, and or protocols that indicate where a patient's medical chart is kept for patients who receive medical care in the urgent care treatment area at St. Agnes Hospital? No. Objection. That's the same answer as you gave before? Yes. Uh, does <coughs> Maryland Provo 1 have any written policies, procedures, and or protocols for how and under what circumstances a patient's medical chart is discarded or destroyed in regards to both paper and electronic chart tracking? I'm going to object and I'm going to refer to the arguments that were, um, that were heard by Judge Fikas in the court, both pursuant to the motion for a protective order that was filed by St. Agnes and uh, this past Tuesday. You can answer if you know. Okay. Uh, so again, as I stated before, Maryland Provo 1 does not own or keep the medical records. Um, uh, they're property of the hospital and would have no uh, authority to decide how they would be destroyed. Okay. Does Maryland Provo 1 ever keep copy of medical records under any circumstances related to the care of a particular patient? No, it does not. Okay. Does Maryland Provo 1 have any written policies, procedures, and or protocols regarding who is responsible for making sure a patient's emergency room medical record is in its proper location? Uh, Objection. No, again, the, the record's not the property of Maryland Provo 1. Does Maryland Provo 1 have any written procedures, policies, rules, and or protocols that describe how a physician's assistant is supposed to document and sign an urgent care emergency room patient's chart? Asked and answered. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. You can answer. Yeah. I guess that same answer as I gave previously is that no, we don't tell, uh, Maryland Provo 1 does not tell a clinician how to fill out a chart. Okay. Does Maryland Provo 1 have any written procedures, policies, rules, and or protocols in existence that pertain to reading and signing of an ambulance report from an ER patient who arrived at the hospital by an ambulance? Objection. No object. Go ahead. Yeah. No, it, it, it does not. It would. Uh, do you know if Maryland Provo 1 has uh, any written procedures, policies, rules, and or protocols in existence that permit and allow an emergency room physician to wait a number of days before signing a patient's medical chart? Uh, you said the physician. I yeah, I'm sorry. It. Yeah, that's, that's a, um, I'll strike that question okay. because that's not pertaining to what you're here to testify about. Uh, does Maryland Provo 1 have any written procedures, policies, rules, and or protocols in existence that set forth a time frame by which an emergency room physician, such as, this is uh, your question too. Okay. All right. Um, does Maryland Provo 1 have a list of payroll records and timesheets that reflect the names and titles of the individuals who were employed by Maryland Provo 1 and working in the ER department at St. Agnes on December 3rd, for, 2009? For the record, I sent uh, Mr. Gasson an email indicating that those records, if they existed, have been destroyed. So that he doesn't have any here today. And I sent the email, was what date was it? May, March 27th. Okay. Um, and, uh, sir, do you know when those documents may have been destroyed? I do not. Do you know why they were destroyed? I do not. 
Does Maryland Pro One have some type of protocol or policy for um, destroying records like that after a certain period of time? I'm going to object to this okay. questioning. Yeah. <coughs> I, do, I do not know if they have a, a policy procedure related to that. Um, do you know who would possibly know the answer to that question at Maryland Provo 1? I do not. Where are records like that kept at Maryland Provo 1? Are, are they a uh, you know, filing cabinet, are they electronically kept? Uh, you know, I, it, as part of my um, role with Maryland Provo 1, that would, that's something sort of outside of what I would normally know. So again, like I don't know where they keep the pens and the copy paper and you know, manila folders either. So are what you're saying is that that's, that's something that was really beyond your knowledge base as a corporate representative? Uh, it was beyond, beyond my knowledge base in the terms of the, my scope of uh, work as a medical director. Okay. So I'm assuming though there is someone at Maryland Provo 1 who knows more about how those records are kept than yourself, is that correct? Um, I would presume somebody uh, does, but again, I don't know who that would be. Okay. Do you know if there is a certain department at Maryland Provo 1 where those records are kept? Like a records again, department? I, again, I do not know the answer to, to that question. Have you ever seen those records at all in this case? Um, it, no, I mean, term, pay, it, payroll records and timesheets? Yeah. No. Um, does Maryland Provo 1 have um, any copies of employment contracts, including all independent contractor contracts for the individuals who are employed by you and working in the emergency department at St. Agnes Hospital on December 3rd, 2009? Objection to the extent it acts for privilege information regarding credentialing. Right. Uh, I'm going to object. We've produced the contracts uh, for Ms. Shaw and Dr. Jackson. We refuse to produce the contracts for anybody else who was employed there in 2009. Not relevant. Okay. Does Maryland Provo 1 have any correspondence between your attorneys and plaintiffs treating medical providers? I can answer that. Uh, number one, it's a privilege. But number two, uh, I couldn't find any correspondence. I'll put this on the record between uh, this office and any of the plaintiffs treating physicians that, that we may have written. So, but the Maryland Provo wouldn't, wouldn't, be ha wouldn't have any, they wouldn't be copied in on it. So, okay. And, uh, sir, you, you actually um, produced the document here today, um, and I think it's exhibit number one. Um, you have a copy of that in front of you? Just, I, I, I'm going to have it. Yeah. Right? I'm going to show it to you. Can you just explain for me what that document is? Yeah, it's a, it's a schedule for the. Um, a physician's assistance at St. Agnes Hospital for December 2009. Okay. The I should say the emergency department at St. Agnes Hospital, December 2009. And that's for the entire month of December 2009? Correct. Okay. And on December 3rd there, 2009, you have it in front of you. I can't. Yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Well, I got it. No, it, it's okay. You can just tell oh, me. Okay. What does it say there with respect to December 3rd, 2009? If you just December 3rd, it, it says Thursday um, 3rd, and it lists a um, series of names which represent the physician's assistants who are working um, at the time um, at diff on different shifts. Okay, and, and what are the, the names of the physician's assistants who are working on December 3rd, 2009? Uh, it was, there was Everett, Subasic, Farkas, Parrott, Shaw, Galarski, and Dembeck. Okay. Okay, those are all the questions I have. Okay. Okay. First of that. Okay. And I'm assuming here the, uh, the times that are on here, well, actually it looks like for some of these there's times listed, but um, for December 3rd it doesn't indicate when the physician's assistants, I guess, are going to be having their shift. Yeah, there's a, at the bottom of the schedule there's uh, a grid of the, the times and so those should be listed, the uh, physician assistant should be listed in order that corresponds to the, the Oh, time. I see. Okay. So okay. the word says Monday through Friday, right. that's the time that they would be working. Correct. Okay. Right. Let me just review my notes here real quick. Sure.
you may not know the answer to this question, but um, do you have any knowledge whatsoever of how long Prudence Jackson had actually been the supervising physician for P.A. Shaw? I object. Don't answer that. As of 2009, of course. Mm -hmm. I object. Don't answer that. There's an allegation in this case of um, an unidentified employee that may have come in contact with Mr. Tolson on December 3rd, 2009, and Mr. Tolson may have um, told that individual that uh, his leg was cold to touch. Um, are you aware of that allegation in any fashion? Objection. I the object. The foundation. He's not here to answer that. Next question. There's nowhere, you sh can you show me where that is, anything, in, what he was supposed to discuss here today? I may reconsider. I, I mean, it, it's a simple question, I think, based upon, um, you know, what, here, if you want to get down to the specifics, there were multiple questions in here related to, um, I think, the list of employees that may have been working that day and including the payroll records, so, I mean, which we don't have, of course, because those were unfortunately destroyed. Um, and I think this question really goes to that. Um, have you made any efforts um, to locate that individual who may have been working that day at St. Agnes Hospital and may have come in contact with Mr. Tolson? I Objection object. to the foundation. I object. Don't answer that. Does Maryland Provo One um, employ nurses that work at St. Agnes Hospital? No, it does not. Does Maryland Provo One employ um, medical technicians that work at St. Agnes Hospital? No. Does Maryland Provo One employ radiologists that work at St. Agnes I'm Hospital? I'm going to object to this no. line of questioning. It's a simple question. He's answered it. Does Maryland Provo One employ physicians that work at St. Agnes Hospital? Uh, not at 2009, they did not. Okay. Were the only employees that Maryland Provo One had at St. Agnes Hospital in December of 2009 physician assistants? At St. Yes, correct, at St. Agnes Hospital. Does Maryland Provo One provide um, its physician assistants any type of uh, uniforms for their job, or is that something that they're expected to get on their own, you know, white yeah. jacket and things? Yeah, like they that? don't. They did not provide uniforms. Okay. Do they provide name tags, or is that something that the hospital would provide? Objection. Object. Oh, you can answer. Yeah. So, I mean, the hospital issues ID badges to people which uh, have identification. Okay. Those are all the questions I have. I have no questions. No questions. We, uh, we won't be inside. We're fine. We're done, Doctor. Okay. Thank Great. you. Thank you. This month, the deposition, we're going off the record. The time is 10.53 a.m.